there are already products on the market that are bacteriophage um, against salmonella. So, but they're, they're just expensive. So yep. it kind of comes to the point where, you know, is it worth the expense? Is the salmonella that you have that big of an issue? So, you, that, you know, same thing with feed ingredients. We know there are things out there that reduce salmonella. Do they reduce it enough? It becomes an, an e economic challenge. Um, you can spend millions of dollars on something that kind of works a little bit and it's not really, it doesn't really make sense. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. I am your host, Kelly Walmsley today, and we are joined by Dr. Diana Barassa. So we saw each other a couple weeks ago or you had a couple students there presenting research um, and a lot of different projects. Um, so I wanted to kind of talk to you about one of the projects today. Can you get, give us a little bit? So uh, right now, you know, Juan has um, isolated these phage. He's working on doing the characterization uh, both with um, electron microscopy and um, genomic characterization. So that's like one part of his thesis. And the other part, he's, he went ahead and got started putting together cocktails of multiple phage together. And he's treating chicken parts to see if he can get reduction. So he's working on some of that in the lab on techniques that are more effective than others using those cocktails to you know reduce salmonella on parts because bacteriophage are, are generally recognized as safe. So they can be applied to chicken, put in the box and shipped uh, to wherever they're going. And they're going to continue to work in the box on the chicken while it's uh, in transit. Yeah, that's really cool. And so um, I guess, do you have any concern from a survival standpoint once they're applied into the, to the meat to try to help from a food safety? Once the bacteria are killed, like the salmonella is killed, if that phage doesn't have anything else to infect, basically they'll die off. Yeah. So there's some concerns there. Um, some of the, the challenges with phage are just producing them in the proper quantities to use them as a treatment. Got it. So that's one of the challenges. That's, that's really neat. So I guess um, long term with some of these phages, do you think, do you envision that um, you know, you, you might be able to tailor them to certain complexes, I guess, uh, where there might be a concern. I guess that's kind of how you got started in that project, finding where you had a, a, a problem with a certain bacteria, and then you're trying to find, uh, you know, a way to solve that problem. Um, but what about even like from a um, pre-harvest standpoint with some of these phages? So it's, it's kind of like an autogenous vaccine. So if you go out and you find the phage that are in the environment in a complex or a farm that you're already having some, some challenges with, um, you're more likely to find phage that are going to be effective against those, those challenged salmonella. So I, it, it'll take some um, engineering on that end to figure out how to you know, we can, we can isolate those phage, but how to grow them up and then reapply them. So there'll be some engineering under that too. Yeah. That's a real, that's a really cool area though. So I think, so for like, um, in terms of how far out we might be into kind of getting into that realm, what do you think in terms of that? Uh, there are already products on the market that are bacteriophage, um, against salmonella. So, but they're, they're just expensive. So yep. it kind of comes to the point where, you know, is it worth the expense? Is the salmonella that you have that big of an issue? So, you, that, you know, same thing with feed ingredients. We know there are things out there that reduce salmonella. Do they reduce it enough? It becomes an, an economic challenge. Um, you can spend millions of dollars on something that kind of works a little bit and it's not really, it doesn't really make sense. Yeah. And, and I guess too, I mean, the hope is that, you know, you learn more about it and then, um, and then as time moves on, technology advances, then hopefully it's something that can really, you know, you're doing the legwork now to find out how to apply it. And then once the technology moves along to be able to isolate it and reproduce it, then, you know, you're already kind of plugged in where you can get it into that, um, operation and then 
um, be really effective. That's right. Hopefully it could, you know, eventually be a common antimicrobial method. Yeah, that's really exciting. Um, so are there any other kind of hot topics or things, I guess, with next steps that you're looking at um, with this or something else? Well, we're, we're still working on doing the characterization and kind of looking at the different cocktails, what works best together. Uh, my lab, we, we do all kinds of different things. I, we have a little bit of lab ADHD, I think. But, uh, <laughs> As any applied program does, I think, right? <laughs> yeah, I see a, a new project and then, you know, yeah, there, there's, it's, I'm like the squirrel. I see a squirrel out the window. We got to go <laughs> do something else. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're working on the bacteriophage. We're working on um, with a company called Pulse Forge in high intensity light flashing as an antimicrobial. So we're getting some good results with that. And um, kind of as I mentioned before, I also work in um, stunning methods. So electrical and gas stunning. And I have a couple of students looking at um, changes in biomarkers in the blood and changes in meat quality when we're looking at different uh, parameters with controlled atmosphere stunning um, CO2. So we, we do all kinds of different things. Ready for more sustainable poultry production? New data suggests that decreasing bacterial loads in feed using Termin 8 supports entric health, leading to improved performance. Gut health is more than a gut instinct. Learn more today at www.anatox.com. Really cool. Well, um, you know, I'm really excited that you wanted to join in today and um, and kind of share with us some of the work that you guys have been doing. I think it's really interesting and definitely very relevant um, and exciting to see that, you know, things down the road, it could be really helpful in, um, from a food safety standpoint in helping to, um, you know, just make our food supply safer. Um, although, of course, we got to cook it too, right? <laughs> Don't cross contaminate. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so I wanted to um, kind of flipping things off a little bit uh, or flipping things, you know, um, how I normally do them. Uh, I wanted to kind of do a little bit of this or that um, so that people can kind of know you from um, just some random questions. OK, so you tell I'll do a little rapid fire. OK, aisle or window seat? Window. I like that too. <laughs> I want to rest my head when I'm sleeping. Yeah, exactly. Uh, crunchy or soft taco? Soft. Baseball or football? Oh, oh, that's tough. Uh, um, Polo. It depends on, on, on what my kids play at the time. Uh, good answer. Good answer. Your kids will appreciate that. <laughs> um, layer or broiler? Broiler. Egg or meat? <laughs> um, I like eggs. I, I love some eggs. Yeah. Um, and last one, um, Bigfoot or Yeti? Bigfoot. What poultry nutritionist or poultry scientist would you take with you in a zombie apocalypse and why? So uh, I love this question. So um, I, I'm going to have to choose Ken Macklin. I know you guys stole him <laughs> from Auburn. And well, we appreciate the gift. <laughs> so, so why? He doesn't take any crap from anyone. So um, he's pretty tough. I'll just hide behind him. Yeah. Full. He would be good at a zombie apocalypse. Yeah. I mean, as, lo as long as you keep him quiet. I don't know. I mean, I have that problem too, but <laughs> but he would be very handy. <laughs> um, so my last question is, since it's a poultry nutrition black belt, Jackie Chan or Chuck Norris? Oh, Jackie Chan. <laughs> good choice <laughs> well I really appreciate your time Dr. Barasa and um, look forward to seeing you um, at our next poultry meeting and seeing what your lab's up to and um, appreciate your time thank you Kelly and uh, thank you to everyone listening out there or watching however you're viewing this and um, that concludes another episode of the poultry nutrition black belt podcast thank you bye bye